On Wednesday, the 24th of October 2007, a coronial inquiry cleared police of responsibility for the 2005 Macquarie Fields riots. The 2005 riots in the southwest Sydney suburb of Macquarie Fields drove a wedge between the police and the community. Cars were set alight and police were pelted with rocks and petrol bombs. Members of the community blamed police for the deaths of two teenagers who died during a police car chase. But the police had not been responsible and it took two and a half years for a coronial inquiry to find it. This is the third installment of Picking Cotton, the Nicola Cotton story. Nicola was a young policewoman who was senselessly killed in an act of anti-police brutality. The aim of this documentary series is to look at the police and humanize them for the young. An earlier echo of the riot was at the local high school James Meehan. In 1992, the school had riots divided along race lines existing between the local ghetto. Aboriginal and Pacific Islander students squared off after a school counselor charged with welfare responsibility for Aboriginal students had given those identifying as Aboriginal permission for activity like smoking or leaving class. Pacific Islander students saw themselves as carrying the load of school pride when the school excelled at rugby league. After the division, the counselor was dismissed. The school had previously had as students those involved with killing Anita Cobby and later Janine Balding. The man jailed for causing the fatal car crash that triggered Sydney's Macquarie Fields riots has little prospect of rehabilitation, a judge says. Jesse Kelly, 21, was sentenced in the New South Wales District Court after previously pleading guilty to two counts of aggravated dangerous driving occasioning death. He was at the wheel of a stolen Holden Commodore that slammed into a tree in Macquarie Fields in Sydney Southwest during a police pursuit in February that year. Matthew Robertson, 19, and a 17-year-old youth died in the crash, but Kelly fled the scene, giving himself up to police 12 days later. The February 25, 2005 incident triggered four nights of rioting between residents of the suburbs and police. Jesse had started those stories after his friends had died in the car Jesse had been driving. His friends and relatives told Jesse's stories as truth, the riots that followed involved a poorly educated and mostly high population of young people gathered into a ghetto by ALP public policy. The policy were their bogeyman because the police enforced those laws the ALP gave them. Kelly had rarely attended school. He was unskilled and unemployable. He smoked marijuana and lived with friends who drank much and smoked a lot of marijuana. Listen, reality check, the Premier said, Bob Carr. There are no excuses for this behavior, and I am not going to have it said that this behavior is caused by social disadvantage. A lot of people grew up in circumstances of social disadvantage, and they did not go out and attack police with bricks and light fires in the streets. There is one blame here, and that is the people who went out and threw bricks and caused riots. There's only one thing to say to them. The police will get them because they are engaged in illegal behavior. For the fourth night running, about 300 residents confronted police, pelting them with rocks and bottles in revenge for the death of Dylan Raywood, 17, and Matt Robertson, 19, who died when the stolen car in which they were passengers crashed during a police chase on Friday night. The trouble erupted after officers raided a unit on the corner of Cottonwood Crescent and Eucalyptus Drive, which Mr. Robertson had shared with three men. Witnesses said three young men and a woman were arrested nearby after the raid in which police seized a rifle and a police baton. By midnight, police had arrested 19 people, including a woman charged for punching a policewoman to the ground. At the bottom of Eucalyptus Drive, as many as 50 youths hurled fireworks, which exploded at the feet of a phalanx of about 70 police. While the dead car thieves and missing young driver got little sympathy from letter writers and talkback radio callers outside Macquarie Fields, social policy specialists criticized Mr. Carr's tough talk and denial of the social causes of the riot. 
He is 100% wrong, said Ross Hornell, a commentator on police pursuits and the causes of juvenile crime. The problems of Macquarie Fields would not be solved through a rigid law and order stance, but through police convincing the residents they were not the enemy. By tackling the suburb's social ills with other agencies, said Professor Hornell, Professor of Criminology and Criminal Justice at Griffith University in Brisbane. Local residents and social workers confirmed that life in Macquarie Fields can be bleak, hard and often violent. They blamed unemployment, poverty, a culture of substance abuse, and a lack of infrastructure for the recent unrest. Unfortunately, I think everyone has admitted that the estate was one of the worst blunders of the last century, said Molly Thomas, coordinator of Southwest Multicultural Community Center. They created terrible social problems. Scott Marshall, 15, a friend of Matt Robertson, said, We got nothing to do here, so the cops harass us. They pull up at 4 o'clock in the morning and play the song Bad Boys really loud and put their sirens on. We want revenge. Empty beer bottles and cans litter the streets and parks. Graffiti is splashed on most buildings. Piles of discarded furniture sit on pavements and derelict houses squat in the overgrown yards. Built in the 1970s, the suburb consists of 2,000 public housing properties and 2,900 privately owned homes. At 11%, its unemployment rate is almost double that of Greater Sydney's 6%, while almost 17% of youths are jobless. There's a number of people who tell me they haven't eaten for a few days. It's a reality in this area, said a Salvation Army welfare officer spokeswoman who declined to be named. New South Wales Police Commissioner Ken Moroni today angrily defended his handling of the Macquarie Fields riots in Sydney and accused the state opposition of politicising his job. He also hit back at frontline police officers who anonymously complained to the media about poor resources, telling them to come forward and discuss their issues with him personally. Mr. Moroni launched his counterattack as visiting Los Angeles Police Department Chief Bill Bratton described the southwestern Sydney riots as disturbances where he saw no problem with police response. I am grossly affronted and insulted by the reported politicization of the office of police commissioner, Mr. Moroni said, as opposition leader John Brogdon continued his attack on police response. I'm not going to be an apologist for driving down crime. That's our function and I'll continue to do it. Mr. Moroni admitted to being not pleased with some aspects of how police let crash fugitive Jesse Kelly escape custody for 12 days and let rioting continue night after night. We will get to the bottom of the issues, he said. Several police officers who have not given their names have held Mr. Moroni responsible for a lack of training and experience that undermined the response to the unrest in Macquarie Fields. I can't deal with things anonymously, Mr. Moroni said. I'd like to be able to talk to the officers um, concerned. Mr. Moroni said he would face any inquiry into police resources, training and pursuit tactics, but said nothing is to be had by nailing people to the wall. A police leadership which acted in the interests of the politicians but not its officers or the community. A police chief who acts as a government minister attacking the leader of the opposition but failing to defend his own methods. A community set up to be at odds with the police whose function is to protect and serve. That is the lesson of Nicola Cotton and the Macquarie Fields riots.